And this one is called The Suffering of Subaru. I thought people would say like this is like the best anime ever. A lot of people are saying episode 15 is like the best anime episode ever. And there is a separate kid in that video that we could probably farm. But hey, let's see what Chibi has to say. After watching yeah. this episode of ReZero, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be very hard, very hard, mm. to compete with this level mm. of writing, to the characterization, to the development. Remember, he said compete. He's not saying this is the best and it's untouchable. Compete. To the voice acting, the sound effects, yes. and the visuals. Just If you think about it, the weakest moment in last episode is probably the moments with Rem, and that's not even weak, right? Because, like, think about, like, the structure of the episode overall. We're not talking about just the Pixar episode, just the overall episode. What happens? Immediately, we're, uh, the episode starts with Subaru realizing everyone's fucking dead. Petra's eyes are gouged out. You experience the horror there. Then, boom, we, Subaru gets frozen and he dies, right? That shit was peak. Boom. And then what happens? Then there's a bunch of stuff with Rem and trying to figure that out, right? And there's some argument with Crucian and stuff like that. Uh, part of that was a bit slow, but I don't think even that was bad. And then after... And, and, that, and that part was like pretty short too. It's not even bad. It's just like relative to the other parts. Like that, that part with Rem, the whole characterization of how much she cares for Subaru, I'd say that's like minimum like 7.58 out of 10. And then as soon as Betrugus takes over, bro, it's a wrap. Like, the cult member shows up, they take Subaru, the voice acting. Betrugus' performance is unreal. Kirito's voice actor, the dynamic range he has, not just being an isekai fucking main character, but the crazy clowns like this dude, amazing. Rem's sacrifice, her desire to protect Subaru, fucking crazy. Then as we go into the fucking mansion, the whole cinematic ending, like, that entire episode, again, not just talking about the specific peaks, the entire episode was, honestly... Peak cinema. Everything in this episode was something way better than any of the other episodes from ReZero. And also... Personally... Nah, Betrugis. Hot take. Guys, I'm sorry. Betrugus is the thing that really made episode 15 special for me. I understand the cinematic ending, the way that the credits rolled after Puck, you know, cut Subaru's head off and said Nemure, right? That shit was hype, but like, Betrugus' performance? Oh my god. It's, it's, it's stupid how good he is at voice acting. And because I'm so infatuated with what the witches cult did and just the, ex just the juicy amount of lore, it was so peak. Oh. This is just my personal opinion. I'm not even also. Betrugus is probably the reason that I was not like able to cry last episode. Episode seven, I broke down and sobbed because of how real the realization was when Subaru figured out that no one actually cared and no one remembers, and he just like he just like melts down, right? Saying, "What am I supposed to do? What can I even do? This is so fucked up." That emotionally just pierced me. The Rem stuff, absolutely, it was tragic. Absolutely, it was beautiful how Rem even, like, struggled to get to Subaru. But because of Betrugus, it was a roller coaster of emotions where I'm just, like, too shocked and dazed to cry. I'm not even going to say this as a reviewer. I'm just saying, as my personal opinion, this episode of ReZero, I think out of everything I have seen from this year, everything, everything I have seen... This 2016, baby! 2016! What was there back then? This, by far, is my favorite episode of any anime series I've seen so far from this year. Mm. I, I'm not even joking. This, this what about 2024? Now it's 2024, August 20th, right? I wonder if episode 15 is still better than any single episode of anime. Hmm, let me think for a second, bro. I don't know. I really, I really like Turning Point 2 in Mushoku Tensei. When Orsted showed up, that shit was fucking peak for me. But these are specific moments, not the entire episode itself. I don't, I don't, Turning Point 2 was crazy, bro. But like, episode 15, it was insanity. Is there any other episodes that really fucking popped up in terms of entertainment value, right? Eminence and Shadow episode 5, I Am Atomic went fucking crazy, right? That episode was great. Demon Slayer finale? Listen, listen. Hashira training. Dookie. But the finale? <laughs>
<laughs> that shit was hype. But ah, uh, again, this is like my personal enjoyment. But if you think about like objective, and it's so hard to say objectively what makes an anime episode good, right? How do you quantify these things? But I just have a feel like episode fifteen of ReZero season one is just truly on another tier. This is by far my fucking favorite. Th this is really. Yeah, again, this is all just subjective, right? Just vibes, opinions. There's no way to fucking analytically quantify why this episode was better than others. But if you have that feeling elicited it into you, right? I think that counts for something. Really good. Yes, that means higher than Boku no Hero Academia. Oh my and god! Yes, I know better JoJo than my is hero? amazing, but I'm just a big sucker better than for JoJo's. psychological themes. It's why I love Berserk, it is why I love Tokyo Ghoul. It's one of the main reasons why okay. I love those two series. The psychological, mentally unstable themes. And seeing this episode, the way it focused in on Subaru, his mm. mental insanity. Was he insane? And again, I want to cover that later on when we review the episode, but like, Betrugius was literally gatekeeping Subaru saying, No, you're not insane. I'm insane. I am peak madness. You? You're in baby, you know, mind broken right now. Sanity. I was just blown away. Because the way it was done was yeah. so tasteful. It was so cringy. At the right type of cringe. And the way it was delivered, the build up to it, spectacular honestly phenomenal episode it was a fucking phenomenal episode the way this was done and i i feel like what really won me over they're probably gonna say rem right rem's like effort and desire her selflessness her wish to just like protect subaru and make and you know keep living right yeah probably it should be rem but better to get <laughs> it's just this two peak better to use two peak See, but again, bro. Was not just the writing when it came to the, you know, the uh, insanity of Subaru, but it was actually the voice acting. Yes, a the voice use. acting really carried this episode. Yes, like it Art hard Bishop. carried this episode. When it came to the insane madman that is like the leader of the witch's yeah, cult. Yeah, dude. Bro is actually. No, I don't think he's sober. I made a joke that this is what sobriety does to him, person. No, I think that he is high off of the miasma of the witch. His brain trembles, man. Talking to Subaru in this episode, the way he carried himself, he mm. was a scary, scary type of character. Yeah. And again, I love characters like this, where as soon as they show up, they, they just command the scene. You can feel their presence. They dictate the entire scene. Due to the soundtracks being played that represents what their theme is, it's like an archbishop. We start playing fucking cult soundtrack. That shit was so peak. And then the voice acting takes it onto another level. I think that it's a probably bad example of how similar the characters are, but in terms of who commands are like a scenario, like when Frieza, have you ever watched Dragon Ball and Frieza shows up and he fucking cracks down the fucking tail on the ground. He goes like, ho, 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 and he says, hello, monkeys. The entire scene is just captivated by Frieza. You know, it's this like ability to, again, just command the scene and Bet to the Goose does that amazingly. The voice actor nailed it, but it was also the demeanor of the way the visuals were done. The way he just kept moving, he looked yes. so creepy because he had this very interesting atmosphere about him. He was a person that... He got that aura, bro. He got that fucking Archbishop cult aura, bro. It seemed like he was just crazy in one moment and very stern and serious in the next. The way he shifted back between his mood swings was something that is terrifying. Yes. If you want to know anything when it comes to someone that is probably crazy or scary or evil or whatever, that that's the type of person. Someone that shit. I love Better Gusto. Yes, what he did to Rem was crazy, right? I get it. I acknowledge that he's an evil piece of shit. But is he not entertaining? I love him. It's between moods. Someone that can be happy and smile at you yes. and you'll know, be your friend and hug you yeah. the next moment. Honestly, to be fair, I reanalyzed that scene. We'll talk about another video. Betrugius was pretty kind to Subaru in the beginning. He asked Subaru, are you pride? Oh, I guess you're not gonna answer me. And then he says, Naka, 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 ni. He's like, Oh, this is such an entertainment sight to behold. And he tries to actually engage with Subaru in an honest conversation. He does. He asks him reasonable questions. Subaru ignores and goes to Betrugus. And Betrugus goes, You know what? You gonna be this rude to me? All right, I'll change shit up. Then he says, Why are you pretending to be crazy? Betrugus, the more I rewatch that scene, the more I realize. 
came in with an honest intention to have a conversation. He was being reasonable. Subaru ghosted him. That was it. When he's shoving a fucking knife in your back. That's... Subaru didn't ignore. I don't care. He did ignore. What do you mean? He wasn't coherent until he saw him. Yeah, you're literally proving my point. He ignored him. He did not respond. He couldn't respond. But he ignored him regardless. He couldn't talk. He was crazy, right? He's mentally shattered. He still ignored. Betrugus thought he was like, huh? <laughs> and Betrugus like, hmm, you're not answering me. You fucking asshole. All right. Why are you acting crazy, right? Kind of the type of character that was. I mean, he was just being jo jolly, like he was just acting all nice and stuff. I and mean, then all of a sudden he goes into creepy mode and he's licking <laughs> Subaru's eyeball. Which <laughs> this. <laughs> Dude, that lick onto the eyeball came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> Oh my god, legit cringe, but that was a good cringe because it set up the I atmosphere of the episode. So, like, again, and, like, this is the first Archbishop that I think I've seen. Maybe there's been other Archbishops, other characters. Maybe the Appa guy is an Ek Archbishop. I don't know. But the story has finally introduced the first Archbishop, and this is him. Just, like, what a great way to introduce how crazy the Witch's Cult could be. Now, I don't expect everyone else to be as crazy as Bet to the Goose, but, like, I think that first impressions matter, and, like, the whole witch's cult that's been hyped up until episode 15, he fucking delivered. When it came to everything of this, one of the key contenders for probably one of the best moments of the episode, like, there, mm -hmm. there's a lot of best moments of this episode. I, I, I can't even choose one. There's just the entirety of this episode was delivered properly. One second. Even when it came to the beginning. They even skipped the opening song because there just had to be so much put into this episode. And then the ending Technically, every ReZero episode, not every, but a lot of ReZero episodes does skip the openings as well as... Well, sometimes I'll just let the credits roll and play the ending song a bit, right? But yeah, whenever you don't have an opening, you know shit's about to get real. Song to holy fuck that ending song. I haven't seen a good ending song ending like that. Like, you know, the way it you know has the song over the visuals going on. Yeah, I think it's called the Requiem of something. It's Requiem, right? That soundtrack was peak. And the episode before that, episode 14, the Myth and Roy, the D something. Bro, what the fuck? It's like... They, they just started to do that fucking Shibu incident shit like you are my special when Itadori Yuji start to break down like Subaru sees everyone dead and just start breaking down Theater D exactly bro. It's like oh my god how am I supposed to feel about this? This is such an exciting song. On for I, I don't know how long it was just that good. So let's talk about one of my personal favorite moments besides the Subaru Insanity. The scene to when Rem, Rem yeah. is twisted and mangled. Her corpse Ooh. is just completely twisted Ooh. and broken. It was one of the most horrific and gruesome scenes I think I've seen all year long. And I've seen some pretty yeah. dark shit. I, I have. I, I read a lot of dark shit. And that right there, yeah. that was pretty fucking brutal. Yeah. What happened to Rem... That yeah. was honestly something that would make any pretty normal fucked man up, crazy right? if you yeah. see something like that. I mean, Subaru's already been through a world of <laughs> yeah. shit. He's been through so much shit already. He's constantly <laughs> died. Brought <laughs> what is this one? She always we're playing volleyball. Reason a high crossover? Damn! Let's go, Red. <laughs> the memes just keep going, man. Brought back and has to relive these different events and see people die around him. I and mean, when he's dealt with his own stress very recently, we got to see a very bad side of Subaru. And then now with this episode, he has to deal with it once again. He's thrown back into the suffering and he has to see this person that really cares for him and even goes as far as the, after her corpse is mangled and bent mm, into yeah. different locations where her arms are twisted around, her head's completely twisted around, she legs. drags herself. And as she hits the ground, you think she's already dead, but amongst. Dude, when Betrugus dropped Rem, that sound effect of the fucking body hitting the floor, oh. This, she manages to use whatever's left of her mana, her healing, heals enough to be able to crawl yep. to Subaru and help him escape. And then she... And the craziest shit is, Rem uses Huma, which is like, I think, some sort of water magic, some sort of liquid magic. And the liquids that she used was her own blood. To cut Subaru's chain and also to defeat some of the other cultists. That was some raw shit. Rem's own blood being used to, you know, use Huma. He dies in his arm after she says, I love you. That 
is a scene of fucked up tragedy. That is yeah. some tragic shit. It, it... And you know what's going to be more tragic? After Rem does all that and says, I love you. I don't think Subaru's going to return that favor, bro. I think he's too busy with that fucking half elf. Rem, I don't think is going to get the love that she deserves. And it's pretty sad. It, that's more tragic to me. It really is. And you know what that reminds me of? Achievement pointed this out. And it's not me that really thought of this first, because like I said, Achievement pointed this out on Twitter. All right. They said, or well, I said first, I said, this reminds me a lot of Tokyo Ghoul, like when it comes to the insanity to the psychological trauma. Never seen it, but one day we can. It reminds me of Tokyo Ghoul, and honestly, it still does. But someone pointed out, honestly, this reminds them of the Eclipse. And thinking about it, it kind of does, because let me explain the details here. You have it to where Subaru, he's chained up. He's locked up in a, ca a cave. He can't move. He has chains yep. on his arms. He can't get out. He can't move, okay? He can't really do anything. The only way he could possibly kill himself is by biting his own tongue. Yeah, and there was a point where he was, like, smashing his head on the ground. Now, he probably should have bit his own tongue, but there was a part where he was literally just smacking his forehead into the ground before Rem arrived, which I think was him trying to end that run and probably because of how much rage he's in or how pissed off he is he probably didn't think about that so he's just sitting here not being able to move and he sees his girl that he's been traveling with in last week's episode he said some awful things about rim and he knows yeah, it. He, he, he remembers that type of shit he knows what he said about rim which probably led into his mental breakdown in this episode which i will get into that in a moment so after all of this, and after he's chained up and all that, he sees Rim come in trying to save him, beating the shit out of which cultist, and she's trying to do anything to save him. But then, as I said earlier in this video, the madman, the leader of the witch's cult, the sloth dude, mm. he straight up, he goes into a serious mode. And as I said, that's Gaslight the scary time. thing about his character, because he shifts between these moods. He's a happy-go-lucky guy, then he's a guy that'll just slit your fucking throat on sight. Yeah, very volatile. But, like, why did he slit the other guy's throat on sight? Because that guy was being slothful, right? Because, like, before, he was like, oh, what is that? Dragon carriage? Oh, dragon carriage, marvelous! They're so diligent, right? And he, whenever you're diligent, he's happy, and he rewards the cultist members, and they say... Now, where's the other guy, the girl? Unknown. You don't know where she is? You fucked up. You're slothful. And then he beats the shit out of that guy, right? So, yes, there is madness. There is absolute crazy volatile batshit insane shit going on in his head. But I think that if we come at him with like a genuine way to have a conversation, in the beginning, again, Subaru ignored him because he was not able to respond. Maybe there's a different opportunity to kind of like befriend him in a different run. And when you see how he goes into the serious mode, I and mean, when he just completely mangles Rim like it's nothing. And we know Rim is pretty damn strong. Like, we know she's not yeah, the strongest, but we know she is kind of strong in a way. And just to see how he easily dealt with Rim like it was nothing. What was it? Authority of sloth, unknown hand. As he showed Rem dangling in the cave. Now, I don't really see what holding her up i'm gonna assume that it is the unseen hand because we can't fucking see it right so he's got this power where he can pick her up with unseen hands that's that's what i'm understanding from the show but the the line was very interesting authority of sloth authority plus sin is like name techniques for archbishop which i think it's so cool Granted, Rim probably was weakened and all that. I mean, we could kind of factor that. I mean, look at her fucking arm. And, like, think about it, right? Could Subaru use, like, authority of pride if he had his own gospel and he was, like, an archbishop of pride? And, like, does the power of these authorities scale with, like, how thick and dank your witch's miasma is? It just really makes your brain think of, like, yo... How powerful can Subaru be if he utilizes this witch's miasma? Right? Because I'm like, dude, there's just so much opportunity. I want to join the cult, go through a whole training session. Arm, the state of her arm was horrible. Still, this man was able to lift up Rim and shatter her body with just yeah. words. It wasn't even that hard for him. So this man...
I don't think it was just words, right? It was actual, like, technique or skill being used. The authority of Sloth. Has power to back up his insanity. And you know what's even worse? That someone that's crazy? It's what? someone that has a lot of power and someone that can do a lot of damage. And that right there is something that is terrifying about that man's character. Because he can do some devastating shit alongside of just crazy dialogue. Mm -hmm. so that man, holy He's my favorite character. I'm sorry, guys. So far, I'm not sure who was my favorite character in ReZero. Reinhardt was super cool, but it's kind of boring, you know? Like, Reinhardt's sick, but he's kind of boring, you know? He's just like a super perfect OP dude. I want some fucked up person. Elsa? Listen. I love Elsa, but like... If Elsa was doing just chatting stream... I would not watch her. But I would subscribe to her OnlyFans. Better Goose, on the other hand, I would listen to his only chatting streams. So in that way, I'm sorry. I, someone has to say it. Half of Elsa's fucking, you know, uh, allure is basically just her body. I'm sorry. She's scary. Yeah, right? And she's a scary on today, scary girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, Better Goose, bro. Oh my god. Better Goose, bro. Hell. So... The scene we haven't gotten enough of Priscilla just yet. Honestly, Priscilla could be just annoying. It depends on how much of a bitch she is. <laughs> but like, she's okay. She's enjoyable. I still think I like Priscilla more than Amelia, just because again, Priscilla is like interesting. Amelia is quote unquote boring in the same way that Reinhardt's boring because they're just like nice, innocent, pure characters, or at least it seems like it. But uh, you know, I, <laughs> I I like them crazy bitches and crazy people. When. Subaru can't save her, and he does this to Rem. It reminded me of the Eclipse, or the achievement reminded me of the Eclipse, and I was thinking like, okay, th this is just like what Griffith did to Casca, and then how Guts was ha- Yeah, you're right, we should be farming a community poll just to see, like, the waifu wars. I think that Anastasia would be last place. I think that, like, uh, people would probably vote for, like, a- I don't know. A lot of people would probably vote for Amelia. One, people probably like Krush more than Priscilla. I think Priscilla comes off too hard for a lot of people. But then again, a lot of lollicons are going to vote for Felt. Who knows? Happen to watch. That, that's exactly what this was. That, that straight up is what this was. Where Guts was watching Griffith do those awful things to Casca. That's what Subaru had to deal with in this episode. He was watching shit go down with Rim, and he couldn't do nothing about it. Now, of course, Berserk had a little bit more of an extreme measure to... I'm not even listening to what she was saying right now. I'm just thinking in my head. So, like, this is the way we're going to do it. I'll have a separate video. Well, because a community picture post can only have four posts. And if you don't have picture po polls, then it's not really fun because you just have text polls. So what I'll do is I'll make a video and I'll comment. Each comment will have a candidate's name, five of them. And the most liked top four will then make it onto the picture poll. So not only am I making a separate video to farm that poll, then it creates that, you know, uh, opportunity to actually have a pictured poll. Right? Because again, the limitation of four versus five. And then when the polls are in, I will farm that poll again for another video. Yes. Yes. That's what we'll do. Yes. To that scene. But still, when I'm being reminded of Berserk in this series, and I, I, I'm still going to say Berserk is my favorite fucking manga of all time. When I am being reminded of Berserk, Berserk, that means that Berserk this glaze. series really, really, really. Glaze. It really got my interest. It definitely got my interest after something like that. And even Tokyo Ghoul, too. Reminded me of Tokyo Ghoul. That's a feat, too. I, I just forgot. Yes, Roswell and, uh, Roswell and, uh, what's, what's his name? Better Goose is probably one of my favorite characters in the show. Yep. Like, you guys can have an idea what kind of characters I prefer, huh? Like, if it's, if it's like a Roswell and Better Goose, like, I like those kind of characters. They're crazy, they're mysterious, they're fun. It's just entertaining. Like that, that's straight up a very good feat. So well done, ReZero, for that. For that well-executed scene. And I think what really got that scene so much more emotion in life was when you see Subaru, how he's struggling, he's grunting, all these different voices he's trying to make. He can't do nothing. Mm. And he's like, I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you, as he sees Rim just being twisted and dying. Yeah. That, oh, oh my god. It, and then the follow-up of how he's walking to the mansion while saying better goose every time. And then the final better goose that he says while looking at Rem dead. And he tears up. That shit was peak. I, I really think that voice actor, that voice is Subaru. He needs a pay raise. He, he's straight good. Up he's needs really a pay good. Raise. Now, you know what? Every character in this episode needs a pay raise. When it comes to the madman, when it comes to Subaru. 
I still think Betteregis' performance was better. But I think that Betteregis' performance can only be better. Because, like, you're supposed to play a fucking mad archbishop, crazy poet, just insanity. Of course he's gonna have more opportunities to flex his voice acting compared to Subaru, right? Subaru, Rim, they all need a pay raise because this episode was spectacular for many, many good reasons. And honestly, it may be just because I'm going into full fanboy mode right now, but I personally have nothing wrong with this. I don't see much wrong with this episode. The only thing I could see wrong... The only wrong? And this isn't even a wrong. Let's think about relative to the other hype moments of the episode. What was the worst part? Just the part with Rem and Subaru as they're fucking, you know, riding the dragon carriage then then get kidnapped. And that's not even bad, right? It's just a connecting part of the story. The entire episode structure, what it delivered was fantastic. It's maybe the art and animation. That's it. That, that's it. The art and animation? Yeah, maybe it could have been more polished like you foldable. But again, I don't think that animation alone is like the determining factor of what's good. But it's interesting because like in Tower of God right now, that Urek Mazino scene, I think the lack of animation did kind of fuck up. I don't know. I've been reading a lot of comments like that. I'm, I'm trying to think to myself. I'm like, was that really that hype? I'm like, get on to something. But everything else when it came to the directing of the episode was well executed. So the mental, you know, insanity and all that going on with Subaru, how crazy he is. This is, this is something I really enjoy about manga, anime, any literature. I just love crazy characters. I yes, love that so much. Me it's too. because it's just so fascinating to figure out what they're going to do next because they're so unpredictable. That's what crazy characters are. You can't really guess what route they're going to take because they're just that crazy. And Subaru's been going... I think that the reason why Tower of God... Urek Mazino episode, even if it was a lack of animations, it's not that ReZero animation was even that better. It's the soundtrack. It's the soundtrack and the voice acting that delivers the scene to me. The soundtrack's playing during episode 15, as long as episode 7, as well as episode 3 when Reinhardt does his shit. That shit is beyond hype. I can't even remember what the theme was of the soundtrack when I, when I was just watching the most recent Tower of God episode, now that I think about it. I think not only is it just the lack of polish in the animation, but I think that at a certain point, the more polished it is, there's like a, 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 a diminishing return as in no matter how high the, you know, the, what's it called, the fidelity of these like high polished animation is, if the soundtrack and the voice acting isn't there to capture the fucking emotions, then it's not going to deliver that emotional reaction from people. Been through this struggle recently. We know he is broken. We know he's been through a lot of shit, and he's already shown complete signs. He's well past insane. And I like how in this episode, the crazy man is giving a lecture to Subaru. Yeah. It's gatekeeping his madness, telling him he's not really insane. And that that made me start thinking. It, it really made me start thinking because the dialogue that was used in that scene. Go watch it for yourself if you don't believe me. Mm -hmm. Go watch that scene again when Subaru and this man are talking. Or he, he, Subaru's not really talking. He's just grunting. <laughs> yeah. The man's talking to Subaru. He's like, why are you acting mad? Why are you acting crazy? And I'm still a little bit hesitant on what he truly meant by that. Because obviously he himself is madness. He knows what true madness is. I, like, I want to know whatever his backstory is, what it took to get to that kind of state. But relative to him, I guess, Subaru is just kind of cringe and the madness is not really there. That's why he even says it's a disrespect to madness itself. There's a specific lines of how he gatekeeps Subaru. I have no doubt that Subaru was definitely was going through a mental fucking breakdown. He was. You could see it. But when, <laughs> when fucking Betanagus is like, bro, you ain't mad. You pretending. I'm like, hmm. Is he pretending? Maybe, again, there's like uh, the example that I gave in uh, the episode where if you've seen uh, different shows, different YouTube videos of like behind the scenes uh, cr uh, criminology videos where a detective will be investigating into like uh, a criminal, potential criminal, and sometimes those criminals will like say they're insane and they'll try to act crazy and in order to uh, p uh, like appeal for like insanity, right? And sometimes they're like, yeah, the demons are telling me, bro. The demons are fucking telling me and I don't know what I'm doing. And then the investigator is like, so, are the demons really in this room with us right now, right? So, I wonder if that was like, that was Subaru when he was breaking down as if like, he, that's the only thing he could have done at that point. Like, I don't know. I think there's a bit of both. I think that for sure Subaru was having a mental breakdown. But what Betterigis is saying in relative to his madness, I guess it is true that it's not truly as crazy. Betterigis' madness, basically, 
<laughs> they're both crazy. It's just Bet to the Goose is just on another level of crazy where it looks disrespectful for Subaru to be acting crazy. Because again, Bet to the Goose is on like another ELO, a different tier of madness. And then as soon as I heard this, I'm like, what? Like, I, I'm like, what? Like, I, I'm thinking in my mind, like, obviously. You're right. Bet to the Goose did cure Subaru. I want you to realize that because Bet to the Goose used the authority of Sloth, unknown hand, and because he confronted Subaru in that episode, it fixed his mental sanity, right, his mental breakdown, and gave a really great moment for Rem. It is because of Bet Geese that episode 15 is peak. I want you to know that everything you think about why episode 15 is due to Bet Geese's action and the consequences thereof. Obviously, the crazy man is the one that's saying Subaru is not crazy, and I'm like... Okay, this is just very strange. Like, I mean, of all people to say that, this man. So, I guess Subaru isn't to the level of insanity as that man. Maybe that's not what quite doing there. in comparison. Yes. But even then, though. Like, in terms of sanity, if Bet to the Goose is a 10, then Subaru might be at, like, a 3 right now. And Bet to the Goose feels disrespected. He's saying Subaru was acting. And we do know this man can shift between serious moments and comedy moments. Or not comedy moments, just this... Jo uh, jolly self and the way he was acting around Subaru when he was saying that type of stuff he was in his serious mode he was like why are you acting y you act like a very sane they did the calm method to cure him you know what Loki maybe I love Bet to the Goose because I see it myself in him <laughs> because like you know Bet to the Goose basically gave Subaru the hard reality check it's like hey motherfucker no one cares if you're fucking mentally crazy <laughs> skill issue <laughs> get over it <laughs> He got over it. See? It, it worked out. It, I wanted the car. And, and was I wrong? Was I wrong? I wanted the carpet bomb the billets, right? And he slaughtered. Exactly. I think that I'm Archbishop material. I am. I truly am Archbishop material. I just need a gospel and I'm going to the church, bro. Mean crazy man. Yeah, it's a poorly acted madman. And he said these words and all that, pretty much implying that Subaru is just wanting sympathy from people. And I'm like, Mm. Did, did did our character just get fucking exposed in a way? I think he's right. Like, did he just get fucking exposed? Now, yeah. hear me out. I know Subaru is probably crazy, okay? I, I know he is. Now, probably... I don't think it's uh, mutually exclusive as in him being crazy and him wanting sympathy. I, can, I think both can exist in this context. Not a crazy we're all thinking. There is one line that the man says to Subaru that really, really kind of emphasizes what the, the writer of the series has been trying to do for these past couple episodes. What has been one of the main subjects in these recent episodes of ReZero? To showcase the bad side of Subaru, how awful he is, how mm. shitty of a person he is, that's kind of what these recent episodes have been True. about. Showing his inner self. Instead of just having this pretty boy, perfect, you know, main character... And he wasn't even pretty boy perfect character in arc one or two, but he did not struggle as much as he's in like arc three right now, right? Arc one and arc two, yes. Arc two was more difficult. Arc one was kind of just tutorial and we got bailed out by Reinhardt, but now we're truly seeing all those themes that existed in arc one, arc two, right? The different sins, usually pride, you know, envy, wrath, all these things that keeps him from being productive. That's what gets him in the end. And in this arc, it's just shown to an even more exaggerated way. We see some actual flaws with his entire self. And the main purpose of it was to show you how he expects something from his good work or something, or he expects sympathy or pity or whatever. He expects something from Amelia. And yes, that's the thing. He does something and he expects something in, you know, uh, in, in favor, right? If you're truly a selfless person, again, you would not be expecting something in return. You see a homeless guy on the street. Are you going to give him a $5 bill? No. You're gonna have a fucking phone recording him and say, Hey, can you smile for the video? I'm gonna give you money, homeless guy. Smile and say how appreciative you are. Is that a selfless act? No, it's not. Now, you can do a good deed and, you know, profit from it. For sure you can. But this is not a selfless act, right? You're trying to get something out of it. And in this, when he, you have a door that... Me? My... What sin would I represent? I would represent every sin. I think that... Honestly, sloth is probably the last sin that I resonate with. But sometimes, like, I do definitely, like, stream later. I definitely want to want to stay in bed. So, obviously, there is more of that. But I think that I'm very prideful. I'm extremely greedy. I'm very envious as well. I get mad often, right? Or what else is that? Gluttony. Sometimes I'll eat two family-sized Doritos sweet chili heat uh, bags of chips in one night. So, there's the gluttony part. Uh, 
Lust. Well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a coomer, so there's the lust part. And sloth. I don't know. Sometimes I sleep into like 2, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. But I went to bed at like 6 a.m. That's still 8 hours, man. The madman says, after he just meeting him, he's like... Are you wanting just sympathy and all that? Is, is that what you want because you're acting crazy? And I'm like, holy fuck, this goes mm. along with Subaru's character that's been shown for these past couple episodes. Now, the crazy person psychoanalyzes the other crazy person because it takes one to know someone, I guess. Well, like I said, granted, Subaru probably is a little bit broken. I mean, if you saw people constantly die and you died and all that, you probably break too. I, I mean, that's common sense. But there might be something else going on here. Maybe. The one word that it wasn't just about people dying this time. It's just like how the everyone got massacred, right? Bro, that Petra scene when she rolled out of the door with her eyes gouged out. Why only Petra? Like no other villager, I think, got their eyes gouged out. There was that one, one cult member said, fuck you to Petra in specific. That really ties it in is that he says, if you were really insane, you wouldn't even care how yes. I look at you. You wouldn't care what other people do. You wouldn't bat an eye. You wouldn't. But that's the insanity at the level that Betteru uses that, and he's at like Challenger Elo. Subaru is like hard stuck in silver. Wouldn't bat an eye to anyone looking at you. You'd be like, Ugh, just staring off at a rock wall. You wouldn't even care. And that that got me. I was like, oh my god, that is true. I mean, if he was truly crazy, like really crazy, like mad crazy, like the way he's at because she's a child, the rest of the chopped up and kept in the shed. Do the cult members have they specifically hate kids. Yo, the more I learn about the cult, the more I realize how much they're like me. You fuck them kids, man. True. Acting, he wouldn't be able to look at someone and kind of realize what's going on because there's multiple moments in this episode. Subaru kind of knows what's going on. I think there's like three examples in this episode. You mm -hmm. have it to where the witch's cult attacks them on the carriage and Subaru acts like he's kind of a little bit fine compared yeah. to how he previously was earlier in the, on in the episode and later on. And then you see it to how he reacts to the witch cult as his leader, Sloth. He reacts and he looks at him all terrified and scared and then he starts acting like, uh, you know, crazy and stuff. And then after that, the way he snaps out, he's like, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. Mm -hmm. And he starts talking to... Thanks to Better Goose's therapy, man. He, he woke up from that insanity. To Rim, it shows that, in a way, some of the things this man might be saying could be a little bit accurate. It, it could be. And I, it might. I think there's a lot of truth to what Better Goose is saying, but also it doesn't just kind of take away from Subaru's insanity. Again, both things can be true. It's not mutually exclusive. Maybe a form of maybe Subaru has just went so far past crazy, he's just now mad. He's just straight up madness. And it, that's kind of how he is now. The rage overrode his fear, whatever feelings that made up to the mental breakdown. Seeing a Rem and her sacrifice and the things that she did, that mattered more than how Subaru was feeling up to that point, which made him more angry and, you know, have a goal to fucking aim for to kill Betrugus. I hope Betrugus doesn't die. He is the main villain for Arc 3, isn't he, though? Oh, man. He's such a peak character, please don't take away my better use. He's just, no, there's not. Well, if the other cult members are just as colorful as him, then I'd be, that, that'd be fun, but oh man. It's not like he's crazy to where he's just loopy and stuff, but he's crazy because he's just so far gone, he, he doesn't even know what to do anymore. He doesn't even know how to act. And it's not like he can really avoid. Well, even if Better Goose dies, I guess I still have Roswell, right? I still like Roswell a lot. These things either. Even if he was to die, he would just get reset with good health once again, but he'll still remember it. And his mind slowly taking a fucking hit. So, I, I just wonder, I mean, did our character Subaru get exposed in this episode about his mental insanity? But even then, though, what really got me was the scene... To when Subaru, he, he leaves. He, like, he leaves the entire thing after, you know. He yeah, and then they'll walk to the mansion as he repeats Betrugis' name, man. Going through each, you know, important, not checkpoints, but different scenes where you see more corpses, right? You see more people burnt. You see more corpses on the ground. Ram has 1v8 and protected the kids in the shed, but not really the kids. The kids all got fucking cut up and stored in the shed, right? Like... There was a lot of great moments in that walk as well. With the soundtrack playing, the snow is falling. You already know that either Amelia or Puck has gone berserk and the snow is already falling. By the time you get there, it's like winter. Pretty much like memory snow. He breaks out of the chains, or Rim breaks him out of the chains. And after we found out about all the stuff that happened, you see to where he's leaving. He's holding Rim and all that. Well, now, at this time of looking at it, we don't really know if Rim is alive or not. I I'm 
Imagine Rem was alive the entire time. Super was walking with Rem. I don't know. Now that makes it more funny to me. I, I thought that she was dead. I thought that she used the last humor, said live on, and then die. But like, if she was... Something about that is more funny in my head now. I'm assuming she's dead and he's just carrying her body. Probably because he's a little bit crazy and doesn't realize. But anyways, he's carrying Rim through the snow. This hard, harsh weather. Yeah. Through the village, through the road. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine she was alive, bro. And Super was walking through the snow and he accidentally tripped. And then Rem's fucking body fell on the ground. <laughs> See, I'm trying to think of it from like a content perspective of how to make it more entertaining, but it would ruin the seriousness, the tone of the fucking episode, right? Like, you cannot fucking trip Subaru and accidentally drop Rem's corpse on the fucking ground. Like, it will be comedic, but it would ruin the seriousness and the immersion. Bro, you, he carried her a very long ways. And it was very sad because this man, you could see how much he really cared for Rim after that moment. After mm -hmm. all that happened, he really cared for her. And as he's, you know, carrying her through the village, you see all the villagers that are slaughtered. It's kind of like a reenactment of last week's episode. He eventually makes it to the mansion and everybody's kind of dead. You see it to where Rom, she's in a little bit of a different spot than compared to how she was before, you know, Subaru died the first time. She's up against the, like, the shed, and you see all the cultists on the ground dead. It's snow everywhere. So much yep. snow, in fact. When Subaru walks through the gate, he sees this huge... And the snow is because... Again, the episode 14 run, when Subaru died at the end, in, in that, like, hidden library entrance because everything was frozen, Puck did said you were too late. And that's probably the initial onset of the, f you know, the, the snowstorm. Because in episode 15, we arrive at the mansion way later, thanks to Beth to the Goose, and everything is in snowfall. And, and if Puck said, sleep along with my daughter, meaning Amelia is already dead, and therefore Puck went berserk. Therefore, in episode 14, Amelia was already dead in that run too, and you're too late by Puck meant that. Huge figure just bust out of the mansion, and... Instantly, I kind of already assumed who it was because it's earlier Puck. on in Voice the episode, acting. there was key, a key. Yeah, and, and, and Puck said, you know, you were too late in the beginning as well. And like, what, uh, what other creature is there with, you know, the, the kind of like ice powers and fucking it looks like a cat, right? It's, it's Puck. The voice acting was also the same. It's Puck. But it's just like, damn, I don't remember Puck being that scary looking, right? Because he's like a tiny little cat. And he's all cute. But there are moments where he's really scary. There, there are moments when he does get really fucking scary, right? Just like the biting noises and it's just like the fight scenes with Roswell, for sure. And then when he went in like the full grown ass fucking like panther, like he looked like a fucking like some kind of panther out of the big cat face. Dude, that shit, oh my god. So what's happening in those timelines? Puck says, fuck it. Amelia's dead. There's no reason for me to live anymore. I'm just gonna just, just freeze the entire world. Like what's Puck's goal? Like I wonder what happens in those failed runs where Amelia dies and Puck goes into that state. He signed who it was. You heard a voice when Subaru was in the frozen hallway when he, like, put his hand on the door, his fingers broke off and stuff. Yeah. We heard a voice right before he died completely. It sounded like Puck. It did. Yep. It was it exactly was. It was. like Puck. So I kind of guessed who that was at the end of the episode when you see the big figure. I and mean, then, you know, like, it, you, uh, my daughter and all that. You heard the voice say, my yep. daughter. And there's Emilio. only one character in this, you know, series that has kind of said, my daughter. And that would be Puck. Puck has said, my daughter, to Amelia quite a few times, actually, in ReZero. So uh, it's kind of obvious that that was Puck that said that at the end and killed Subaru. And we do know that there's hints that Puck is pretty damn powerful. And Amelia did say a while ago she did have a trump card with Puck if things went bad. So that most likely is it. Puck was just killing yep. everything on sight with his power. So yeah, you have a door Subaru has died twice thanks to the axe of Puck. But it, I think Puck killed Subaru in this, you know, the last time in this episode is probably out of kindness. I really think that's what it was. Some sort of mercy? I mean, it's a fucking failed run. I might have just fucking kill you, give you a painless death so you can restart. And I still, that inconsistency with how Subaru referred to Puck by his name and even knew the 9 to 5 mechanic before even meeting Puck in that run where we met at the root cellar and Puck just acted casually. And even in break time, in break time, Emilia mentions, hey Puck, how did you know your name? And Puck was like, yeah, that was kind of weird, huh? And like, hello? So Puck, I am assuming, definitely understands. Puck also can read minds, kind of.
I don't know how detailed he can read minds, but when you contact with Subaru, you know, Puck can understand what Subaru's like emotions are and kind of like what he's thinking. So there's that aspect too of regression stuff. Who knows? What it was because I, Subaru's already experienced so much, and I, I feel like Puck kind of realizes that and he, he understands. And I feel like Puck just, you know, killed him just to let him go at ease. Probably killed him just didn't yeah, want I him agree. to suffer anymore. A little did Puck know, you know, Subaru's gonna have to suffer even more because he's gonna have to figure out a way to save them. Yeah. So, let's talk about what's going on. Like, the actual foundation now for this arc. So, we now know that Subaru, he is being reset to the point when he's in the town before... Oh my god, when we saw the Alpha Man, I was like, holy shit, this is not episode 1 Alpha Man. No, 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 no. It was the newest scene when we, you know... And Alpha Man was like, ooh, half L, that's fucking bam. Make Lunica great again. I made that joke right now. That that was with the timeline when it got reset too. Before he leaves the, the mansion where he was getting healed at. And so this is after the conversation with Amelia. For instance, after his argument with Amelia, after all that stuff that happened in the uh, capital city, you have to Subaru can't run from anymore. He cannot run from what happened. And I... I, 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 love I that. just gotta say Good. If they went back and literally undid the Amelia Subaru moment... That would make the show so cheap. It would piss me off, and I think it would piss a lot of people off. There needs to be consequences, and you need to deal with it. It's great writing. If you avoid that, it's a fucking get-out-of-free-jail card. No fucking reason to even have that moment. It would be a stupid thing. I'm so fucking happy the writer did that. It, it, the writer is not negating the development that Subaru can get from this scene. That is right there. That, that made me so happy. And just knowing that Subaru didn't reset before his argument for Amelia, I'm just happy. I'm so happy to see that. That was really fucking good. That was great use of the writing of the series. So, Subaru now, he, he's with Rim. And he's still with the mansion to get healed and all that completely. And so he has a little small window to try to get back and save them. But honestly, it's not enough. Because the time he finally gets there near the village, it's the morning that they get attacked. They get attacked at that time. And... Well... I think that the White Whale will definitely come into the plot, right? Because they mention specifically, the reason that it takes so long to get to the mansion is because the main road is blocked by fog. And you should not fuck around with the white whale. If that can be overcome, then suddenly we buy more time. In order to get up, in every arc, what happened? Subaru tries to do shit by himself, and he fails. And he realizes that once he thrives, you know, throws away his ego, once he gets some powerful friends to help him, he can come over it. I think that this arc will also be solved in a similar way. He can't do it by himself, but he has a lot of powerful people that he knows. I think he should go talk to Priscilla, Anastasia, fucking. Krush, ask for help, Wilhelm, Reinhardt, Julius, Al, I don't care. Like, what Subaru needs to do now, like, straight up, he needs better politics. He needs better diplomacy. He needs to learn how to fucking yap and make alliances and understand other people's incentives and what they want and be able to offer that in exchange and create these alliances. Temporary, sure, not forever, but I don't think it's unreasonable to try to recruit people. This dude needs to figure out how to get friends but the thing is, he does everything to burn those bridges! They fucking bridges! Why would they help Amelia? Again, it's all about understanding other people's incentives. If you understand what different characters' incentives are, right? Some sort of mutual benefit we can gain, then it's gonna be fine. Why would Krush even help Amelia, right? Why would Krush fucking heal Subaru even though Amelia asked? Because clearly there was something to gain there, right? Or maybe it was out of just generosity. There must be a reason that we can come and unite on. And then, Subaru needs to figure out how to fucking lead these monkeys. Ayano Koji, dude. Dude! Imagine if Ayano Koji was Subaru! Holy shit. I wonder if he would be so cold and calculating that he would just like not even care about the death. He's just so cold. The psychology part would be... It would be a boring story. It would be a power fantasy story because it would be too easy. But like, the way that Anakoji uses tools, understanding different people's perspectives, their incentives, delivering value, and then making alliances and teams, right? That's how we overcome it. But right now, again, the bridges are just fucking burning. Subaru has no charisma, no aura when it comes to fucking compelling the other side to agree with him because he's all about himself. How do we get that shit sorted out? That is pretty damn bad. Because that means that there is a possibility, a very slim chance, that some of our characters actually can die permanently. Because... 
I expect that to happen not too early into the show, but if a checkpoint happens after a meaningful death, that will be crazy shit. And again, imagine episode 14. As, you know, we arrive at the mansion and Rem's stuck on it. Rem has a dagger coming out of her. Like, imagine if we fucking had a checkpoint there. That would be so cruel. But I still don't know what really constitutes towards, like, how a checkpoint is made. It seems like every time we overcome some kind of challenge, a checkpoint is made. This new checkpoint at the Alpha guy is kind of pretty far. But not too far, right? It's def I, I thought that it would happen in the same bed as Emilia left him. But these checkpoints, man. Alpha guy, man. What is up with the Alpa guy? The checkpoint so far has been Alpa guy, Roswell Mansion, and Alpa guy again. I joke about how Roswell's a Grand Wizard of the Cult. Alpa guy is definitely an ex-Archbishop. Ex Alpa guy is Archbishop of Pride. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know why he's Archbishop of Pride? Because the Pride position is missing, based on Beth you know, implications, saying, are you Pride? And? <laughs> and? <laughs> calls Subaru broke because he has no money and a prideful person would call others broke. <laughs> now, the logic it took to get there is kind of sketchy. There's probably a 0.0000001% chance of it happening, but you, you can see the logic there, right? If Subaru can't get there in time, like if there's no way for him to get there in time, the character's gonna die. I would not be surprised if Rom died. I, I would not. I would not be surprised if she died in this arc. Rim most likely will live. Amelia most likely will live because, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, things about her character we still need to know. So I'm not really worried about that. But Rom, though, there is a possibility she, she could be dead. Like, she could definitely die. And it's just crazy when you think about it like that. Like, holy shit. So... He said Ram there, but I think it's Ram. No way, Ram going to live. I don't believe it. Yeah, this is a this is a really good arc. I like the direction this arc went. I like how you know Subaru went with his checkpoint the way. Yes, like this arc, the stakes have just everything on the line is on a different level compared to arc one and two. Like, and the challenge to overcome just seems fucking impossible. This is actually so hype. It's put at because he can't redo some of the things he's already done, and he has to live with those choices he made, and this adds for more development between Amelia and Subaru, which I can't wait to see. So, overall, this episode of ReZero exceeded my expectations. Way past my expectations, and... I well, to Chibi, it's probably like just getting surprised out of nowhere because obviously, you know, it's airing at that time. To me, a lot of people were hyping up episode 15 before it even began. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what happens, right? When the bar is raised so high because people already hyped that shit up, you go in and then sometimes it's going to feel bad because the expectations were too high. But I think it was met. That again, that Bet to the Goose's whole performance, Rem's sacrifice, the whole fucking cinematic ending there. With his credits rolling in red. Oh, that felt like the series ended. I felt like ReZero just ended there. Like, movie's done. That's it. That's the bad ending. Goodbye. And I was like, holy shit. I know I've been talking for quite a while now, actually. I think this video might be over 15 minutes long. Yeah, well, my video right now is over 52 minutes long, Chibi. It is what it is. Holy fuck. So, yeah, I mean, ReZero... This... By far, one of my favorite episodes of this year of anime. When I do, like, what, you know, my, uh, summer, or not summer, what I will do, like, my 12 Days of Christmas and stuff, if I pop up, like, my top five favorite episodes of the year, this is definitely in it. Instantly. Definitely in it. Because nothing, in my opinion, honestly, I think is going to be able to beat this. Maybe Mob Psycho. It's a possibility. Maybe other series. Mob Psycho has some fantastic episodes, but episode 15, man, ReZero, it just... <sighs> At the end of the day, it's just personal people, you know, personal... People's personal opinion, right? Who are you to tell me that this is the best episode? And who am I to tell you that this is the best episode? It's all about our personal preferences. And I think that episode 15 is probably my favorite episode of ReZero so far. But again, episode 3, 7, and 15 definitely stand out amongst the rest. So this year could surprise me. But so far, everything I have seen, this is the best. Hands down. So, yeah. We have a main character that has transcended madness. Maybe acting out and wants people to feel sympathy for him. We have the main villain so far of this arc that's just crazy but Bet jolly the money. has Kunti. a lot of power. This rim, the rim suffering is just too great. And oh, oh my god, you know what? One thing I need to say before I wrap up this video it's kind of unfair. <laughs> I think it's very unfair yeah. for all the other female characters in this series after what happened in this episode. I think it's just so unfair.
because Rim had such a big opportunity to shine and show her loyalty and unconditional love for Subaru, so it's hard for other characters to shine? Nah, bro. See, I ain't the same, bro. Doesn't matter. Ram, just going. <laughs> Ram steam potatoes, easy clear, easy diff. I'm still all about Ram. No, I can recognize Rem. I can recognize Rem and appreciate everything she's done absolutely in terms of like beats and things that she's done for Subaru and what she's done for the story. Leagues ahead of Ram. But I'm gonna say Ram is still better to me because you just can't defeat that personality, baby. Unfair to really compare any other girl to Rim. Uh, because Rim, oh my god. I mean, she had the focus of arc two, and then now she has the focus in this arc. Yeah. It, it really just opens your eyes up to how good of a character she, she is. She is great. And, I mean, how can Amelia really compete with a character like Rim? Ask Subaru, bro, because you know that Subaru ain't no way is he ever going to look at Rem the same way he looks at Amelia, bro. And it's just like, fuck, she deserves so much better. I mean, granted, Amelia is the main female character. I'm willing to bet she's going to get a lot of development in the future, which could change my opinion rather quickly. But at this time, though, I, I just, damn, how do you beat something like that with Rem with her twisted, mangled body? She crawls over to Subaru. Have Rem play two rounds of Twisters and then crawl. And then, you know, tries to save him. I mean, and then says, I love you in his arms. Say, I love you even more than Rem does. Arms before she dies. Just think about that scene for a second. Like, how I'm does thinking. any other female character in this series beat that? You I've already thought about it and gave you my answer. Two Twister games and I love you more than Rem. You just don't. And I mean, that, that, that is something so cruel, too. I mean, it, it's really sadistic in a way. The writer, the way the writer did that. Because there's many series I've watched in the past where I would want a female character to just say, I fucking love you to someone. and Or the main male character. And had this finally confronted. And Subaru confronted this romance between Rim and himself rather tragically. She says, I love you, and dies in his arms. So I wonder how he's going to feel about that after. I hope he treats her right. I hope he gives her all the love and the respect that she deserves. But I have a feeling that Subaru is uh, too locked in, too angry, too vengeful, and has an eye set on Amelia over Rem. I don't think Rem's going to get the justice that I want for her. Everything is said and done, because we do know Subaru, he likes Amelia. He likes her a lot. So what's he going to do about his feelings, or what, what's he going to do about Rem's feelings for him? Is he going to just say, no, I can't, or is he going to fall for her? I'm just... I don't know, and I think that's what episode 18 is going to be about, because you guys keep hyping that up as like, like that's like Rem's episode, but um, we'll see when we get there, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that's going to be mad about my take on that. Oh, I, I can't wait to make people mad. So curious. You know what? I would really like it if Subaru fell for Rem. I would. I would really love that. Not because I just like Rem so much right now, but because it would be so original, because you always see it to where the main male character... If Subaru doesn't actually have feelings the same way that she has feelings for Amelia. Even if Rem has done all this, it is still not... Love towards Rem is not an entitled thing. Like, she, does, she is not entitled towards those affections, right? Subaru can simply decline and say, you know, I'm going to pursue Amelia instead. That's perfectly fine, right? Love is complicated. You can't just, like, force your cards upon the other, hand, other person and, act, and expect them to return those favors. It's just... How that shit is handled is, you know, gonna determine how, like, I just, like, perceive Rem and the Subaru relationship. ...character gets with the main female character, Amelia, Subaru. They, they usually would get together if everything is fine, if she doesn't die in the end. They usually get together, so I would love to see a different, like, example of showcasing that... Fuck both Rem and Amelia, go for Ram, Subaru. Ram can make you steam potatoes all day. Subaru wants to be with someone else. Rip, I would love that. It would be a really great direction to take the story. Now, I highly doubt that might happen, but I would like that. I would really love if that happened. So that's it. That, that's my thoughts of this episode. All I right. know I probably rambled for a bit. I'm very sorry. Forgive me for that. I know this video is probably long, and not many of you probably... Yeah, we're reaching an hour long by now. Probably are going to watch to the end. I'm very sorry about that. I just had to express my thoughts on this episode because it was just that fucking good. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I've already given you guys my thoughts and comments. Guys, please go check out Chibi's video. Go like it. Sub to his channel if you haven't. And I will see you on the next one.